Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are going to take a look at the post lab. It is specific on springs. And then what we are going to do is at the end of this, uh, take a look at how to quantify energy. So if you guys remember correctly, our lab, we were stretching springs and um, taking a look at the force that needed to exert in order to stretch the spring a certain distance. So we looked at an F versus X graph, X being stretch. And um, one of the interesting things was um, we had a slope unit, which was a Newton per meter. And um, as always, whenever we look at graphs, we should probably ask ourselves a couple of different questions. The first one being the meaning of the slope. So let's actually just kind of focus in on here. Um, so this is formalized notes of what we talked about in class. The meaning of slope is going to be how many newtons of force it takes to stretch or compress a spring one meter. So that's a, it would be like five newtons per meter. That means it takes five newtons to go one meter. It doesn't necessarily have to be a newton or a meter. No, <clears throat> it can be a uh, newton per centimeter. Um, doesn't really necessarily matter, but just make sure that your units work out. Um, what we've come from there, what we understand from there, is this idea that different springs means different slopes. So if I go back to the graph, what I can realize is this might have been the red spring. And then what we saw was maybe the green spring had a different slope. Well, the only reason why it had a different slope was it was a certain property of that spring, really based upon the number of coils that it had, based upon how tight the coils were um, put together, based upon the metal that was used, based upon the mass of the spring, based upon a whole bunch of different things. Um, so that is a property of the spring, and we call that a spring constant, short name K. So spring constant, which we are going to label in as a K, is going to be what the slope is of this F versus X graph for a spring. Uh, meaning of Y intercept, this should make sense. If you don't have any stretch, you shouldn't have any force, which would be called an ideal spring. However, there are cases where there are such things as, I just crossed it off, I didn't mean to, such as a non-ideal spring. This is um, a case where you are exerting a force, but the spring is not stretching. Um, these things are really usually, um, many cases like a couch spring or something where you're trying to exert a force, it is just not budging. Um, we won't do any calculations with these, but just know that these things exist. They do have a y-intercept. They are more like a real life spring. But for our cases, we are going to deal with ideal springs, and you will see that in other physics textbooks as well, it's talking about basically a no y-intercept um, graph being that if you exert a force, it's going to stretch. <clears throat> so looking at this right on over here, what we can do is we can come up with a general equation, being that we have um, Fx and our slope. So we can say force of a spring is equal to k times x. Now you'll notice that I'm actually doing the absolute value here. I want you guys to determine what direction that force is going to point. So um, whenever you stretch at a certain distance, note that the force would just be in that direction that you're really, or I'm sorry, you would have to determine the direction based upon the force diagram. So don't let a negative fool you in that situation. Just assume that it's the absolute value. So that is one of our equations. However, um, I told you, or I told you at the beginning of this unit, I'm like, okay, we are going to study energy. We're going to look at springs, and we, where is it? Where is the energy? Um, so, one of the other major pieces is we're looking at this graph. And we know that the slope is not the energy. The reason why the slope is not the energy is as I increase delta x at each one of these given points, I should be putting more energy into the spring. Well, what happens to the slope at each one of those points? The slope stays the same because this is a straight line. So the slope is constant as x increases, so the slope is not energy. We know it's not the y-intercept, so our main question is what increases as x increases? <clears throat> and looking at this graph, you will notice one thing does increase as x increases, and you can start to look at this the area of the graph. So this area right here, as we go from here to here, notice how that area just increased. So what you'll start to notice is the area 
of the f versus x graph is the energy transferred by that force. So this is a really key idea because what we do here is this idea right here um, allows us to say any force can transfer an energy. So it's basically looking at a force across a distance which allows us to say energy is being transferred. So for instance, what we can do now is we can say, okay, the area of the F versus X graph is the energy transferred by that force. But we can be a little bit more specific in this case and we say, what is this force? This is a force due to a spring. So this area here is the energy transferred by that force, but specifically it's the energy by the spring because we're looking at F of the spring. So this actually becomes ES. And you realize that ES is the area of that shape right there, which is going to be equal to one half times the base, which is x, times the height, which is f spring. <clears throat> this is assuming, again, we need to just make sure we know it. This is assuming um, that we start our y-intercept in this case, uh, or I'm sorry, our x not is equal to zero meters. So no stretch, or we started off without a stretch there. What we are going to do is we are actually going to make this a little bit better because one of the things that we just came up with is we have a situation where f of a spring is actually another equation up here. If you take a look, oh, I can zoom on just a little bit more. Back here, f of the spring is equal to kx. So I can drop that in right there and I can rewrite this as one half um, f of the spring is k times x, and you realize it's k times x squared. It's equal to the energy stored by a spring. So this is a new equation that we come up with. The energy stored by a spring is 1 half kx squared, um, x again being the stretch or compression of the spring, k being the spring constant, which we've come up with, um, and, well, let me just write those in, spring constant, and x is the stretch at that one given moment, assuming that we start from zero. <clears throat> so this is how we come up with um, energy, and the biggest thing that I want to make sure we understand is going back to this one, the area of the F versus delta x graph is the energy transferred by that force. So now what I can start to do is I could start looking at situations, let's say, where I have Fg acting on the object. And what happens if we lift that object a certain height? And so now we notice that we are up here with an Fg. And the question is, wait a minute, there's a force across a distance you start to notice that we can actually come up with the energy, in this case, due to gravity by this force, Fg. So you look at the Fg versus, in this case, it's not x, it's going to be height, or y in this case. Um, and you can say, wait a minute, the area of this graph <coughs> would be the energy transferred by Fg which would be what we know of as EG. So I want you just to give this one a shot. We're going to go through two more examples in class, but you start to realize that we could actually come up with new equations for now, EG, um, EK, and um, E internal. So we are going to attack these in class, um, but I want you to try to come up with our EG equation using this idea right on over here. And we'll talk about it tomorrow in class. Great. Thank you very much. Have a great night.